Hey guys, Tyler up here bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Wolfies. AJ spawning in the south. We have Kirov playing as Soviets. Immediately going for MKVD teaming out with him is, oh my god, 3 to one His US forces with infantry. From the north we have Relica playing as Ossia. With German infantry, defensive and German mechanized. And finally, 101st Airborne. Also with Osir, Storm, Christian Armour, and Fortified Armour. Random team, both sides I believe. Uh, Kirov, around 40, oh my god, 30. Relica, 30, and 101st, uh, rank 9, uh, I think at the moment. Coming up to the far side, Kirov. Early uh, sandbag move here with the wire. We're looking to dig in over here. Otherwise, you know, this building can be a bit of a headache. You can slam an MG42 in there and pretty hard to dislodge. Looks like he's got one of his conscript models stuck back there, though. This can happen sometimes. The building sandbags right against. Wow, I didn't actually know that. If you jump in a building, the final model just teleports in. And, uh, Okay, strats. I've been there getting suppressed real fast. Conscript's coming in on the flank, but the pies are there to limit the damage. I've got an Ura across to the building. Vishon uh, just running away from the pies, getting behind cover. Trying to take that a uh, long range situation. We cut off play here by 101st. I've been running on though and they're out of the machine gun's arc at this stage. And that squad's actually dying very quickly. MG does push forwards. Does have some decent heavy cover and I think well probably would be able to complete the capture if the Grandiers weren't coming in. And uh, this MG coming up as well, Kirov backing out. Combination is looking for vulnerability out the back. Wouldn't be able to harass the field, but there's a green deal there dug in behind a sandbag. And Relic actually going for an early mortar here, which is interesting. No team weapons for Kirov, or oh my god. But maybe he can dislodge some conscripts from some heavy cover positions, or perhaps the buildings. It's going a long way around here. Looking for something. Do clear the arc of the machine gun. And do force the mortar away immediately. Pies pop their flame in. Not quite in range of the rifleman there. And now making a charge on here with two squads should be enough firepower, firepower rather, to beat the Grandius. Close fight though. But these and these do win. I kind of think, you know, these days of combat easy is roughly equivalent man for man to conscripts why it's slightly better since their target size is better. So, you know, he's coming in with four models of that and I think three models on the conscripts. It's kind of like coming in with slightly more than a whole conscript squad which you know, once it's in that range, is favoured against the Grandius. There we go. A couple of good engagements for the Allies now. Axis backpedal with their team weapons. Wow, nice harassing play by the re echelon getting all the way down here. Getting out of there safe. Got the captain now for, oh my god, did lock in to infantry. And uh, going for a mortar half track right out the gate. Early timing on this. I wonder if he's going to go for an AT gun next. He's gone for the mechanized stage, which is interesting. If he was. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll see how it shakes out. Some more 
half track. This is the way the Ossian Mortar can start working on these MGs next. A great hit from it. And MG has to get out. And Frog pushing up here now as well. Keeping the conscripts on hand for some merging action. And uh, the Axis all of a sudden in a bit of trouble. A little bit slow getting the tier 2 tech structures down. It's like Relica going for one extra unit. 101st did not. Getting the tier 2 up now, but potentially for 101st you can see 222 could just about be popping out now if that tech timing was on point. And that would be really turning the tide because the allies don't have an answer to that. They've got anti tank grenades on the riflemen, but that's about it. 222 could be doing tremendous damage right now. That will be the punish. You know, the more half track with not much to defend it. 222 could just dive in and kill it very easily. It's kind of a, allowed this period of dominance from the double more half tracks now. Where they've gone uncounted. Greenie's pushing in. This group's Uraran. Interesting. Stays behind the light cover. Does mean the fuel point's going to get decaptured, but maybe thinks with that extra light cover. Oh, Rifenate. Ooh. Targeted it a bit too shallow. If it was a little bit further back, I think that could have been a squad wipe. But yeah, if you want to clump up on uh, light cover like that, yeah, at that kind of range as well, you have to be expecting a Rifenate. To watch those engagements very closely. But it was an interesting idea, you know. Didn't want to come in here to jam the capture. And, you know, maybe 50 50 the fight. Tried to get behind the light cover to try and win the fight. Instead. And uh, here we go. 2 2 2 doing exactly what I was talking about. It's gone hard. Finding the riflemen and knocking them out. Conscripts coming across. They do not have anti tank grenades. Riflemen do. I think with one. And uh, yeah, definitely a bit greedy. Oh my god, going for two mortar half tracks before an anti tank gun. Or an anti air half track potentially to help defend. Paying the price for it there. But a uh, nice, nice moment there for 101st to dive in and get the kill. Some courage to you know dive that far right into the base doorstep, but it paid off. What a half tracks! They are really lighting up the axis at the moment, making it very hard for them through the middle of the map. But bit of a move out the side, hundred first with the green blob. No LMGs, but he's upgrading one or two of them now. Guns coming in now for oh my god, so not gonna go for an anti-air half track. At this stage will be very late. 222 threatening the dive, takes an AT gun shot. AT gun though backing down the road very quick getting out of there. Okay, Flamer inside the building. Some great damage. I'll see if Flamer arrives, so jumps out of it. Oof. A little bit near the door. And now a max amount for Kirov has got the T70 rolling up on this side as well. We do have a pack, but not quite there yet. Guns connecting once. T grenade again on the 222. Slowing its progress. Let's see, 101st quite active moving the machine gun around now. We get spotted getting out of there before the mortar shells start to land. T 
T-Gun a little bit far back from my god. But now the Axe is fighting back. It's like Kirov really hasn't uh, AT gun is ready for combat. got too much going the at the moment. He's got the Zis out. Oh, Pack pushing all the way forwards for 101st, but I'm going to get a second shot off, unfortunately, for him. Oh, and this is trouble. Pyro's taking a big hit from the T70. Could go down the Pack, spins around. Just take a while to reload there after shooting a shot at the other mortar half track. So it doesn't get any damage on the T70. It's going to switch sides. Meanwhile, pushing in quite far. It's in 1919s now, fully equipped on the rifle and the re echelon. Not on the uh, captain yet, maybe. There with the Maxim. Just rolling up here. Looks like I wanted to go for a barrage on that MG, but it's already repositioned. I think though, making a bit of a play here. MG suppressing quite quickly though. T70 takes a Faust down the far side, but pack very far away. And repairs are on hand. Just gonna slow it down. No kill potential. And the 222 is rolling up now. Getting water half tracks all the way back at base at the moment. Not entirely sure why. Bit two on the 222. It's got that boost vision now. Just about running right into the AT gun. Comes to supporting infantry now. Coming in for a rifle nade. Pretty obvious one, but oh my god, if he wasn't watching this. Doesn't dodge. Still has the firepower to win this, though. With the heavy cover. And M1919. Ooh! Now, there's another thing about the double mortar half tracks. You know, if those two mortar shells land in quick succession, they can just about result in a squad wipe. Similar to the British mortar pit. It's got both mortars upgraded. Oh, and there we go. The phosphorus with one, HE barrage with the other. I guess the D crew on the MP42. Where's the AT gun? Back at base. Ooh, and the rifleman go down. It looks like to a rifle nade. On 101st, he's going to be able to pick up the M1919 as well. Pretty much all started because this AT gun was back at base. Looks like, oh my god, maybe having a little bit of trouble controlling all these units at the moment. Oh, and Kiro's under some big pressure. Is this... It's decrude. Jumps back on the MG42 there. The building's getting very low, yeah. One more mortar shell might result in it getting flattened. So it jumps out of it. Got a regular Soviet mortar coming in for Kirov. Ooh. It's a great hit there at that short range. These conscripts don't have a heavy cover position anymore for some reason. Oh, the Grandiers go down. Okay. I mean, they took a big hit from the mortar, but they're now standing there. One model pretty healthy for a long time. Could have got out of there. Hands of four coming in. Good timing. 15 -ish minutes. Looks like uh, they're shearing healing at the moment, which seems to be slowing things down a bit back at base. Are relatively close spawns though on this map, so 
It's semi viable. Personally, you know, like, once you get a comfortable position where you can build your own healing, it looks like 101st, so you're going to build it for him. That's interesting. It's just, you know, you don't have to then micro your troops across to your uh, ally's base every single time. And you can be more focused on what's happening on the front line. You can't play up 101st. Hands of War looking for the kill. Still going in, but a little bit too slow. Just for an attack ground, hoping for a miracle. It's not happened. AT gun way out of the picture for Kirov, so that was free, and he, he knew that, you know, the recon plane providing vision of this entire area. He could see that it was safe to come down here with the Panzer IV. Well, he technically he could have run over a mine. About as safe as you can hope for, really. I have a minesweeper. Oh, Roof immediately. 400 first. Oh, and a conscript dead inside the building. Ouch. And a dangerous game there. People rolling up. It's just setting up. Maybe he doesn't have vision because of these uh, shrubbery, though. The attack ground's going to connect, however. Second one doesn't. Quite out from care of immediately looking to shut down those recon planes. But uh, Ralika does have spotting scopes. He's not the one with the 222, however. Scopes can chop down fast. of an awkward position he's bleeding so much manpower at the moment struggling to get his tech down he's for even for soviets this is a pretty bad kd generally if you've gone for a t70 you would have hoped to have clawed a bit back during the phase before the panzer 4 arrived Panzer Fort's rolling up here, looking like it wants to go for the quad. Luckily for Kirov, P4 misses the first shot, so it gets out of there safely. And Ralika, I think upon seeing that he missed the first shot, it's like, okay. No point in chasing now. No way I'm going to be able to get two shots off here. Finish the job. Thank for coming in. I think on this. Base exit and actually catches the major. Well, four kills on the T70 though. I bet you're just doing health damage, not actually getting those model drops. And a fourth grenade picked up by Relica at this stage, as well as a second anti-tank gun. Shot from the Zisp, but it's very far forwards without much support. Could actually get decrewed here. The Panzer Force coming back in. The T70 looking to defend. But can't defend against the Panzer Four. The T gun's in some trouble. He's got a second one in the build, but it's not here yet. Building fast, though. He's got the bull time bulletin. But yeah, it was a reckless move by Kira pushing the AT gun like almost all the way up here. Very little support, and he pays the price. Good work by Relica coming back in with the Panzer IV, though. You know, on half health, it's quite risky. You know, if there was a second anti tank gun back there, could have backfired on him, but paid off. So hard to kill off those Soviet team weapons, so if you get an opportunity like that, it's golden. The squad of pioneers has arrived. Second AT gun out for 101st as well. The double water half track should be able to apply quite a bit of bleed at the moment. Going the right one, it was up to 11. Another one just at 2 though. 
Sherman's got to be very careful against these double AT guns. Gun is on us. So, going to come back here, try to recruit his Maxim. There we go, then. Freshly built this, keeping that Panzer IV at bay. On the double AT guns, though, T is going to have to stay on its guard. Having trouble keeping these Grandiers off his AT gun right now. The quad's going to come in for a little bit of assistance. Ooh, but again, a late retreat from Relica on the Grandiers. It's just coming back in. Crew this with the combat engineers. Major artillery out the back, lining up the phosphorus. Doesn't look like it's hidden too much, and the Werf is on this side now, going for the Maxim. And there's this back there as well. Both of them hang in there. Oh no, spoke too soon. The second Werf are coming down. Decruise the Zis. Conscripts are pretty healthy though, can jump back on that weapon. Okay, Mortar Decru, the M1919 is doing some good work. Mortar Half Track's coming across now as well. The axe is kind of getting herded into this corner. Here come all the LMG Grandiers. 401st. It's got four of them. Okay, good hit from the Sherman. Here come the double AT guns, though. And the uh, Green Blob. Quite tough to stop. Oh my god, no machine gun. Haven't gone for a captain. Needs a zone blob there to hold the ground, but they're all back at base healing at this stage. 11 kills already on that Werfer and 8 on the other, so they've gotten off to a flying start for 101st. And maybe aware, you know, I feel like Kirov is typically quite a team weapon heavy player. Maybe yeah, going for this to counter Allies composition. T-34 out now for Kirov finally. And they're close to the munitions for anti-tank overwatch as well. Force hold out. Oh! Okay, 101st pushed all the way forwards, maybe looking for some more half-track kills and turns over his pack. Okay, so worth as though, oh, there's so many units here for, oh my god. Decro on the pack. Phosphorus down now as well. T-34, it's coming around the long way. Crushing a lot of obstacles over here though. Perhaps revealing itself in the fog. He's maybe, you know, wants to go for those Werfers there. Right the way back in base though. Hard to achieve. Sherman rolling back onto the front line. Crowds show 300 points on their line. Couple shots in from the Sherman. AT gun D crew back here. 100 first. Already has rebuilt the pack. Probably doesn't want a third AT gun, honestly, but he's coming in looking for the kill on it with his double packs, but he's lost vision perhaps? The 222 would have had sight there. Maybe not. Might have just been getting its vision blocked by that tiny shrub. Ooh! Didn't notice that Relic had built a Howie and first shot five kills. 
plane crash down there. AT gun decrewed very quickly. Got a second AT gun rolling up, but oh my god, running right into the howitzer's line of fire here. And here come the Werfers as well. Oh, the rifleman dead. Oh, and there goes the pack as well. Had the vision from the 222 helping to tighten up the scatter. Does manage to recover this one though. So it's not a complete disaster. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that is a disaster though. Kirov coming in here trying to save the day, but all the AT guns are targeting this area. And that does not go well at all. I think it was a bit reckless for, oh my god, running back into that exact area where the Howie was firing. Asking for trouble. And he found it. Okay, I'm getting a few mines down this side, which I think is a very good idea. Maybe that's one way they can come back into the game. Panzer IV comes out that side and gets... Triggers a mine. Execution now for Kirov. Time on target out the back actually knocks out the Howie. Didn't last long, one barrage. Looks like the Katusha not getting much done with its first barrage. It's reasonably well targeted, just the rocket scatter not really lining up. Greedy is rolling forwards, and looks like they're going to be the ones perhaps triggering the mine, so that's force quite safe. He's rebuilding it. Oh my god, that's pretty close to another time on target, so I don't think this is a very good idea. I mean, just generally, Houts is not a very good option against infantry company. So, I'm not sure what he's thinking. Here come the double worthers again. I think the max on the target. Holds his ground and uh, it works out. Ura anti tank grenades. Hankering for an opportunity to pop the anti tank overwatch. Oh, hit a telemine. Look at how far forwards that telemine was. Double AT guns are rolling up on it. Should be trying to get away. Maybe smoke from the water half tracks. No. Nope. Oh, the 222 is looking to finish the job. He's going to lose his 222. No, the Shim is still shooting at the infantry here for some reason. 222 just goes down to small arms damage, I believe. Mortar half tracks are in some trouble now. The AT guns are all the way forwards here. One of them goes down. Here comes the Katusha, though. We're kind of splitting the middle here, not hitting either anti tank gun. Really bad targeting on that for Kirov. side with these double AT guns for both the Axis players making life very difficult for the Allies right now and unfortunately that was the high vet mortar half track as well oh my god lost four kills for the priest not a bad start just got to get that vet one once he can start abusing the uh, creeping barrage and regular barrage being on separate cooldowns Playing a dangerous game here, trying to go for a Panzerfaust. Worth a strike, trying to knock out the mortar. Oh boy, here comes the Panzer IV, finds all of the indirect fire back here with almost no defense. Only able to knock out the mortar half track though. Good news for the allies is, you know, the priest and the mortar half track take more than one shot to go down, so. And uh, speaking of going down, Green is dead out the back. During that dive. And allies actually doing pretty well on victory points at this stage too. In spite of feels like losing most of the game to this point. They've had a very strong hold on this VP specifically. So doing very well in that department. Pretty 
increased free to fire again. Oh my god, needs the manpower, he needs the Jackson, but just can't scrape it together at the moment. Okay, Major coming through with a recon pass. Did Relica cancel the second Howie? Yes, he did. Recon plane shot down quite quickly, but might have given enough vision for Worfus to select their target. We've got the elephant on the field now as well. Some more bad news for the allies. He just goes for a Kachucha barrage right out the back when there's a whole wave of units on the front lines. So these Kachusha barrages honestly are probably losing the game for the Allies right now, but this the game winner. Roof is returning fire on the Kachusha. So, yeah, you knock it out. Elephant rolling forwards, looking to do some damage on these mediums. There it goes. Ooh, combat engineers hanging on by a thread. The P4 doesn't have vision. Late retreat from Kirov. He loses one. And uh, Kirov, he's just falling apart right now. He's sitting in front of this elephant. Just gets out of there before the final shot comes through, though. Did he lose both? No. Looks like one of the combat engineers did end up getting out of there. It's a tough composition to fight against, you know, you kind of want to go double anti tank guns to help counter the elephant. But then if you do that, you're playing into the hands of the double vet two already worth as they've got that cooldown bonus. Scatter bonus? Do they, do they never have a cooldown bonus? No, oh, okay, it's just how it's worded. Recharge. Is it 20%? I think. I got nerfed at one stage. Maybe it's from 30%. Securing our territory. Sound like a Oops, in. Okay, T70 out the far side. Hands are blitzing across here. I think the bunker might have spotted him. So, uh, it's going to be a dead T70, unfortunately, for Kirov. He's got a bit of life, though. Hands misses the first shot. Got for a bit of a drive by, providing some vision. Old drive by, P4 misses again, the pack connects, and here come the rest of the packs. Abandoned! Shusha on one of the packs, vision provided by the flares as well. And uh, that's actually enough to knock out the T70, that's actually very good for Kirov, but he lost it to the Grandius. They just came up and finished him off with the Panzerfaust. I think it was still on half health, wasn't it? From the earlier damage. Hands are worth it. Oh, Kirov. He's having a bit of a nightmare now. Ooh! Don't know how that infantry is surviving, but they do. Flamethrower pops. That's when you know that the engineer was on zero health. It's the only time the flamethrowers crit like that. It's looking quite comprehensive for the Axis at the moment. The only thing the Allies have going for them is the victory points. The fact that 101st as well is kind of at its limit. Can't produce any more army also. Here we go. Freshly produced Kachusha. Priest still not vetted up yet. Low progress towards Vet 1 really hurting him, and the elephant's actually rolling up looking for the priest kill, I think. The pack is there though, stops it in his tracks. But I, I think the priest would get one shotted, right? Is it 240 health on the priest? Get one shotted by the elephant. If, it is, if that's the case, I don't know if it's that or it's 320. In which case it wouldn't. The double T-34s, looks like they're rolling up. Maybe trying to go for the Werfers again. But that bunker back here just providing enough 
501st. Oh! Randy's down. They dropped the M1919 as well as the LMG. The elephant rolling all the way forwards. So, oh my god, I'm not going for the Jackson. I'm going for the double Shermans instead. Interesting idea. Does mean he's very reliant on this pack, this lone pack. And uh, here we go. Here come the double Werfers, I imagine, targeting this. It's decrewed. It's actually very low in weapon health now as well. It needs to repair it back up. And the double T-34s. One of the packs still decrewed from Relica. So he's a little bit susceptible to this T-34 play. He's gone for the rebuild on the howitzer again. Oh my god, does have the munitions for time on target already, so... I don't, don't like that. I was dead. 101st now as well. Okay, a couple wipes starting to come the way of the allies. Looking to turn things around now. And the priestess have their one with this barrage now. Okay. Maybe the allies can start to turn this around. Get out of there early with the priest. Still has control of the pack. Sherman's playing very evasively, making it difficult for the elephant to find a target right now. Working out very well for oh my god. Captain did out the back though, looks like the base howitzer. Ooh, targeting the US base and it's getting some results. Oh, but Relic are losing a pyro down here now. Oh, what is this? Repairs. Oh, jumps back in the tanks before the LNG Grandies can finish off the crews. No dodge with the ambulance though. Still hasn't recovered that. Only two kills for the uh, howitzer. Got the wipe on the captain though, so that's big. Oh my god, doesn't have enough munitions for both the recon plane and time on target, but he's going to go for a creeping barrage try and knock it out. Will it do enough damage though? It does. Alright. Oh my god. Priest's veteran doesn't even need the time on target. Creeping barrage. Since it has that pinpoint scatter, I guess if you line it up correctly, can do enough. The priest does uh, 200 damage per shot, so you kind of need like two great connections and one AoE to finish off the Howie. Okay, we've got a command tank now for 101st. Elephant again, uh, okay, so he's coming forward, he's looking for the kill here. Oh, doesn't quite get it. You can see, he's lining up the shot. Reload didn't quite come through in time, and there's another worker. Pack surviving, though. Here comes a, another Sherman in the build. Oh my god. So he's kind of getting a bit of a critical mass going now. has recruited that second pack. Triple T-34s now for Kirov. Feels like the allies, they've got some momentum. they got perhaps a bit of a critical mass. And Relica, one thing that he's missing, because he's only got one Pioneer, is Telemites. There's no Telemites at the moment to defend against this mass medium play. Because he can kind of rely on vehicle crit repair. So he doesn't really need a second Pyro as much with this commander. Does have the downside of not having oh opportunities to build those towers. Oh, big artillery from the priest. Monster shots in there. Twenty-two kills all of a sudden. Maybe eleven after the Howie died, right? Maybe 
the graveyard. And here come the T-34s from the side. Probing. Pushing all the way onto the fuel now. And uh, 101st, feeling the impact of that quad. You know, he keeps dropping these recon planes, but they don't last long. And without the vision, his elephant's just not getting as much work done as it often does with Jaeger armor and the spawning scopes. And of course, he lost that high vet 222 that was provided by a lot of vision. So, ooh! Monster! Uh, was that another priest barrage? Maybe that was Kachusha actually. Double AT guns decrewed. With that Kirov feeling quite bold, dropping down anti tank Overwatch somewhere. Okay, the Shermans are rolling up on the far side against the Elephant. And they've found it here. Without those AT guns, 101st doesn't have enough defense. And what a move here from the Allies. Axis eventually paying the price for moving their double AT guns around right next to each other the, the entire game. The Allied Indirect Fire found them. Now the Allies, I think, are actually in the lead. Look at that. 101st was, you know, Popcat maxed at 100. And now he's down to 39. Do I have these available here to recruit? But yeah, I mean, that was disastrous. Command Tank did. He lost one of his Werfers out the back here as well. Ouch. There goes that bunker. Good horse. Decent worth a strike, but the pack again just hanging in there. Whoa, where's the Panzerfaust from Relica? Oh, it probably would have been a dead T-34 if it took an engine clip. The Panther could have come in to finish it off. She's out the back here, but Catches the MG a little bit. Oh, you're really raining down, making it difficult for the Axis now. Dog T-34 is looking to finish off these decrew weapons. Here come the AT guns of the Axis, but got a little bit of vision thanks to that capture flag. But not enough to save this, and uh, I think 101st may be making a mistake not immediately running out here to try and recover those decrewed weapons. This is it's a lot of manpower he just lost there by not being able to recover them. And now the Allies looking to take control, both at about 80, 101st still down. And now 40. And another T-34 for Kirov now. He's got manpower for days as well. Kind of needs to reboot some of his conscripts. And now he's essentially, you know, at his pop cap limit. He builds another conscript squad and reinforces everything. Okay, the triple Shermans now. Really getting a, a roll on without that elephant to keep him in check. Uh, there goes a grand here for Relica. Kind of feels like maybe the Axis are trying to split their focus, send the units to both sides, and it's backfiring a little bit. Relica suffering quite a few easy to avoid squad wipes. Maybe not that easy if you're under this much pressure. Priest fire way out the back. To regular barrage, the bunker does survive. Did he, did he steal an MG42? Shannon's looking to take out the next bunker. Okay, Panther now for 101st. Should do pretty well against these Shermans. Just has to stay out of the grasp of that lone pack. Another Sherman for, oh my god. If he gets this, he'll be close to his pop cap limit now as well. MG dead there for Relica as well. The artillery really ramping up the bleed against the Axis. 
Oh, he tries to go for the decap, but it cost him his squad in the end. Comes the Panther, though, but... Sherman Tank's already quite far back, and 101st a little bit lighter on infantry now. Can't really force away these green, I mean, these riflemen, especially if they've got double LMGs. I think most of them do. Because that squad died here and dropped two as well. But the AT gun does get decrewed. The Panther is a bit safer to play aggressively. Still, yeah, I can't believe that thing's still alive. We would have died on, upon that decrew, but somehow. Still ticking. Oh, P4 blitzing in, looking for the quad, knocks it out. A little move there, a T gun covering it as well. Could actually knock out the T34 here. Ooh, there we go, the Panzer IV. Look at that, 48 kills. Three vehicles destroyed. Great move by Relica. They needed that, the Axis, because uh, they have been suffering greatly the last eight or so minutes. Another look at the KD. Kirov has been even th evening things up fast. He's up to 27 kills. P4 getting aggressive. We've got a lot of vehicles back here for Kirov. He's got the munitions for the insane go watch. Still blitzing up to safety though. He's rolling up. Has gone for a second Pyo now, Relica. Comship's going to come in for the AT nays. Doesn't have the munis quite for the anti tank Overwatch anymore, though. From uh, throwing that. Okay, the Triple Shermans, they're migrating. They're looking to team up against Relica, who was quite far extended down here with his AT guns. A lot further back now, though. Got the Sherman on. Uh, armor piercing at the moment and here they go the allies are rolling in five munitions off the anti-tank overwatch pack rolling up maxim actually decrewed but the greedies go down they're on armor piercing they still do have decent aoe the sherman Somehow set up the triple cap here, but they are very long VPs. We've dropped to 200 points. New grenadier squad is ready. And he's uh, greedy is struggling against the rifleman. Here comes another squad though. Just the way that their LMGs have lined up. You know, with the, all the weapon drops, the riflemen are just doing so well in the long range hit to hit. It's making life very difficult for the 101st. Great pre shot here. It's a creeping barrage, knocks out the Grenadiers, nearly takes down the pack. Trying to put a bunker down here, but it's not going to last long. Does this knock it out? Got a second AT gun now for Kirov as well. Only got the one conscript still, lacking snares. And here we go, a bit of a move coming in from Relica. Kirov doesn't have the munis for the anti tank overwatch. We're doing some creative driving here, TT4. This one's too close to execute a ram. So I think the Panther's going to be able to drive out of here pretty clean. To decrew by the LMG Greenies who find a window here. The Maxim was actually pushing onto the VP area. Not available to suppress. Oh boy! Triple Sherman's rolling up out the back. One down. People are still hanging in there. The Almond Skirts, no! Goes down with a max range shot there. The hero P4 for Relica finally bites the dust, but here come the Panthers. Looking for some revenge. We've got the pack there. It's decrewed by the LMG Greenies. I think 101st could have continued pushing with that half health panther. Look for some kills there, but decided to back out.
Oh, T34 down for Kirov. How'd that die? Not entirely sure. Yeah, pushing in. Wants the Vet 3 T34, but we've got a Jackson on the field now for, oh my god. Hath is going to blitz in. Doesn't want to trade though. Get 2 Panther. Very valuable to the Axis at this stage. Axis though have a lot of repairs to do. Only one pie for 100 first. He's building second one now. Squad White's catching up with him. Relica can of course use the emergency repairs. The bunk is dead now for 101st. Driving in here with a panther, but he doesn't have the pintle upgrade, so he's barely doing anything. To the rear echelon. I think if Relica just killed off that decrew pack of he's not on one hit. It would been so good. Didn't finish it off. Panther's rolling forwards, but... Oof. Triple Sherman right there. Sherman on high explosive though at the moment. So the Jackson takes a walloping while they switch rounds. He's blitzing in, and there we go. They knock out the Jackson. Now the Triple Sherman, they were slow. Hesitant to switch over to armor piercing and it's cost, oh my god, dearly. Maybe could have knocked out that panther otherwise if he's earlier on the round switch. T34 is getting the job down in the center of the axis. Very aware of the VP situation. Oh, the triple, in fact quad, T34s. Take a lot of damage though. Priest out the back here. This is hanging in. Valiant nearly, but here come the double AT guns for Kirov. Still on cooldown. Oh, here it comes. It's going after the double AT guns. No, it's going after the VP. Looks like Kirov was expecting on the AT guns. They started dodging, the combat engineers did not. So it gets the squad wipe on that. Reconstructed by Kirov, though. The Panthers applying a little bit of bleed, but the AT gun. Again, the thorn on their sides and uh, dropping down the anti tank Overwatch. Gonna force the Panthers back here. Gotta be aware of that. Oh, the Greed is dead so quickly to these T34s. Drop the LMG again. If the allies get a bit of vision here, this could go south very quickly for the Axis. And the first did not back all his units far enough away. Oh, there goes the Werf 101st. Oh, no. Oh, he had so much time to back out of there as well. Just sitting, you know, like 15 range inside the strike and the... He Custom is worth it. Took some damage on the Panthers as well. Unnecessary. Here come the Sherman tanks, but they reveal themselves shooting at the recon plane. There's some time for these Panthers to react. Panthers, I think, could probably win this. Pops down some smoke. Here come the attack rounds. Panthers destroying their frontal armor, and here comes the Panther of Relica. Looking to save the day. One Sherman down. Knock out one Panther, though. This Panther. Trying to avoid showing its rear armor. Here come the double AT guns. Another Sherman down. Oh, Panther takes a main gun crit. Sherman dies. Good trade of armor there for the Axis, but they're so low on VPs. It might be enough to secure the Allies the win anyway. Main gun crit luck. What? He's the one who took the main gun crit. I, I, did any of the Shermans take a main gun crit? Very strange thing to say. It's just coming into the center. 18 VPs left. Guys have a strong hold here though. Doesn't have time to repair up this Panther. Going to spray some machine gun fire. Attack grounds here. 
Looking well for the double zest though. Has to back out for repairs now. Conscripts is hanging in there. They're suppressed, so they're not taking too much damage from the small arms fire. The squad of Grandy is cycling in, but the riflemen get in there now. And they've got grenades. This barrage has shut that capping attempt down. And the allies managed to secure the triple cap. And there we go, the axe is throwing the towel. GG. What a game. Hell of a comeback there by the allies. Very impressive. It looked like they were down and out. Kirov was really struggling for such a long time. There's a moment, you know, I think where Kirov was down in maybe like the high 50s in terms of pop cap. And both the axes were, you know, just about scraping 100. But some, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about the uh, Howie build by Relica, but yeah, did a little bit of work, I suppose. It's just that they, they didn't last very long, did they? Either of the Howies. I think that did hurt the Axis momentum. A Panzerwerfer instead might have helped shut down Kirov even further. Another Panzerwerfer. But yeah, the Allies, they found the window, you know. They knocked out all those support weapons here with the indirect fire. Then they immediately seized the opportunity, got aggressive with all their medium tanks and really put the hurt on the Axis during that window. Exposing that weakness. I think, yeah, Relica missing out on building a lot of telemines this game. With only the one Pyo, just didn't have really time to put them down. Could have really hurt Kirov's uh, aggressive T-34 play. But just, yeah, couldn't really find the time. And oh my god, you know, I thought it was a bit questionable with the Sherman spam, but he made it work for the majority of the game. He ended up getting quite a few Green Day wipes because of it as well. And, you know, again, I think we see Fortified Armor maybe a bit of a letdown compared to Jaeger Armor. You know, the quad just shooting down those recon planes again and again, really limiting the effectiveness of the Elephant from 101st, allowing so much more freedom for, oh my god, to, you know, avoid damage. Doing a very good job of, you know, coming out to the far side with the Sherman, the Elephant kind of lumber across here and then switch back. Maybe double team the Axis, really pulling that elephant around the map, not allowing it to do much. Very good counterplay there by Oh My God. And of course, you know, you can rely on the anti tank Overwatch to help make a lot of these plays a lot safer for the Allies as well. GG, you know, that was a very, very impressive comeback by the Allies. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.